We all knew it was going to happen. It's time to put tracks on Cinderella. And this time we're going with real tracks, not the cheap little Chinese ones that were probably made for a snowblower. We picked up a full set of these from uh, somebody locally. They've hardly been used at all, which is perfect. They are about to be used a lot more. These are actually for a Polaris ATV or UTV. These are actually the front ones. Obviously we can't use all four because we only have two wheel drive, but the front ones are slightly smaller and they're slightly rounded uh, to make steering easier. So we're gonna use those on the rear because steering's probably gonna be difficult with such a short wheelbase and such giant tracks. And then also, these have a little bit of a slope to them on the bottom, so uh, that'll also make steering easier um, because that means the contact patch will be smaller on harder surfaces. Um, and then also that slope will help help it roll you know, up over the snow instead of trenching through it like the little ones on the Camaro did. And then we got a set of skis that came from the RX-1 snowmobile, which we stole the engine from for the Triumph. So they're nice and fat. They're uh, SLP Powder Pro skis, so they're actually a good ski. They're a little bit worn, but they'll work perfect for this. Hopefully give us a good amount of flotation. And we might actually be able to drive in the deep, deep snow we got. We've been getting a lot of rain, but there's still much, much snow. I think uh, step one is just um, lift this thing up and take the wheels off and just bolt these on. We're two seconds in, we've already come across our first issue. Not a major one, but these don't quite fit on this little shoulder on the hubs. Uh, not sure why, because they're both designed for golf cart stuff, but Whatever, all we gotta do is throw this in the lathe and turn it out a little bit. Hey guys, we finally have a good idea of what we're gonna do with our V11 Jaguar. So I wanna take a quick break to talk to you about that and the sponsor of this video, eBay Motors. Now last time, Ethan and I showed you how easy it is to sell something on the eBay Motors app. Just take a picture of the license plate and boom, half the listing's already there for you. And if you're a buyer on eBay, you have the lists of all the different car categories that automatically populates and shows you what it thinks you wanna see, which is fantastic. And the buyer protection is just the best. But we're gonna tell you today about the new features on the eBay Motors app. So coming soon, there's gonna be a community tab where you can talk about your favorite cars, your favorite engines. You can comment and share cars that you see on eBay with your buds or just an internet community who's into that car. And we're gonna use this feature to make a tab about our builds. So the Tacoma, the BMW, the Jag, and we're gonna talk about where we got them, how we've modified them, what worked, what didn't work. And it's gonna be a really interesting community for you guys to hop into, learn more about the cars you wanna learn more about or share the knowledge that you know with other people who are just getting into it. So it's gonna be a really cool place to hang out online on the eBay Motors app. So you'll be able to dive in right away and get in a private chat with the seller. So if you see a car and you're thinking, Oh, like how many miles is on the clutch? When did you do the redo the transmission? You know, like all these questions that might be more specific to you, you can ask the seller directly in a private chat and get feedback more quickly. So we're really excited about that feature coming soon. The link to the app is in our description. Hop on there, check out some of your favorite cars and see what's going on. And now, what the heck are we gonna do with the V11 Jag? 
Well, we talked about putting the solid axles here on the Jag, but now we're also planning on throwing in the 350 Chevy as well. So we're gonna go from V11 to a V8, but it's gonna run a lot better. It's gonna make more power and just be overall more useful. So we'll still have everything sticking out of the hood. We're gonna go bigger wheels, bigger tires, and then we're gonna do a big overlanding event with a lot of other people that are on YouTube and Instagram that you're probably already following. So look forward to that in the future, but for now, let's get back to the Barbie Jeep. So we're back out in the uh, scrap yard, stealing more parts from the RX-1. There's not a lot left here. No, just a chassis, which will probably be cannibalized soon for other things. But uh, right now I'm stealing these front spindles to see if I can just uh, make an adapter to attach these, the whole thing with the steering and everything onto the uh, Jeep. Because these are already strong enough, more or less, to hold the 600 pounds of this giant sled that they were on. Although one of them, was a little bit messed up. Yeah, that that's kind of amazing. Got bent like that while it was through all of this and bolted tight. So somebody hit something real hard. Oh yeah. But it's still plenty strong for what we're doing. Well, uh, these aren't gonna work, uh, you know, on their own because they're not tall enough. Given that these are all screwed up anyway, I'll probably just uh, take them apart and use this saddle part here, save myself a little bit of fabricating and use that. Um, and maybe even use the shaft in the middle of this if I can figure out how it comes apart. Made these sleeves here in the lathe that go over the bolt and they are very strong. So they'll add a lot of strength just in themselves because they're bolted now super tight up against the backstop here. And then also I'm gonna make some brackets that'll uh, bolt onto this so that this can't pivot because there'll be this long, you know, arm sticking down here. So I'll make a sturdy bracket that bolts it onto this in a couple of spots and then also have a bracket going this way to it so it's all much stronger than what's here. got this side for the uh, ski adapter assembly all tacked together and, and roughly finished. Um, I went with kind of overkill on everything as much as I could. So three tubes down to here still doesn't weigh all that much. Um, and then uh, I built this big heavy duty triangulated adapter bracket that bolts onto the steering arm here so that when you know, forces applied here, it gets transferred, you know, up into the rest of this spindle shaft here, instead of just relying on this part of it. Um, and then this, this tube here goes to the back of it to help give it some, you know, if you hit something in the front of it, it'll transfer that force up instead of just bending it. I think that uh, this whole assembly is kind of on the weak side for a ski this big and potentially running into things but we'll just try to avoid running into things.
probably the first time ever we are painting something before we use it. Imagine that. Imagine that. Plan is make the uh, rear stabilizer attachment brackets and then send it. So uh, I have these pieces of inch and a quarter 120 wall tubing, which will fit snugly over the one inch of this control arm to make a bracket to mount to. So uh, this, the stabilizer here will just mount to the back end of this uh, lower outer link of the rear suspension. And uh, that will have a side effect of giving us anti-squant. So when you hit the throttle, this track will want to spin around like this. And then that stabilizer bar, which will be preventing that, will push or pull down on the back of this link, which will want to make the suspension, suspension extend instead of compress. So it'll be interesting to see what it looks like, but normally when you hit the throttle on this thing, it squats back just because of weight transfer. Um, and it probably has some squat because of the chain and everything, but now it'll have anti-squat. I've split just one side of this for now. It'll be just easier to work with. I'll make the pinch bolts for this side while it's still in one piece. Um, and I just have this to test fit it on. Um, and these are just some bolts we had laying around. They happen to be stainless. So, you know, those will work. They, these bolts don't need to be super big because all they're doing is pinching it tight. And, you know, that's more than strong enough for that. And then these are just little tiny pieces of half inch tubing. Um, that I'm going to use as the, it'll be the part that the bolt that's welded on here. Boom. She's a work of art. I think so. <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit different than the Camaro on tracks, that's for sure. Yeah, uh, you know, just a slight upgrade on every single level. Yeah. We've got about eight times the ground clearance, a lot more horsepower, uh, and probably, I don't know, 20, 30 times the flotation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the real deal right here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look at the ground clearance. That's like, what? let's go ahead and measure it. Yeah. <laughs> let's just go ahead. 17 inches of ground clearance. Wow. Under the, uh, well, 16 and a quarter under the battery tray. That's <laughs> the lowest point in the front. And then the rear is 12 and a half under the rear axle. And here's the rear brackets. I love how they look right now, all sort of like heat discolored from welding. We haven't painted those yet because we're impatient, but uh, they turned out pretty well. And you can see, you can watch, let's see. Uh, let me push down on this. You can see them kind of, they move back a little bit. They twist a little bit. And because it's mounted to this shaft that's on heim joints, they can twist to the side a fair bit, which is probably a good thing because then they can move back and forth and won't just bend stuff. And so it's got a pretty solid amount of angle. Oh yeah. That's more than your average snowmobile, I think. Mm -hmm. That's sick. Also, unintentionally, this direction, you can go way past the center. <laughs> which it's might make starting it a little easier because you can get the steering wheel any angle you want. So is it rip time? Yes, it is in the rain with soggy snow test rip time. Sick. Yeah. 
Yes! She's a little more tippy than she was, I guess. Just a little bit. <laughs> oh, now I'm all wet. And I didn't put my goggles on because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I can't believe it still does wheelies. Yeah. Like, really good ones. Oh yeah, really good ones. So It's so smooth. Like, because of the suspension being really good and then also the snow is soft, Mm -hmm. It's just so floaty. Yeah. All right. Two seconds later, back on the horse. That's how you got to do it. If it'll start. Yeah? I had to let off because it was just wheeling and then when I hit it again, it didn't have the power. <laughs> oh shoot. <laughs> uh, you think it would have done it in first? What's that? Would it have done the whole thing in first? I honestly don't know. Well, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, the problem is just the wheeling. not the most stable because <laughs> it's so tall. I mean, it's still not as tall as an ATV, but um, it's just, uh, it feels not that stable because the snow is soft. So when you start to lean, it starts to sink on one side. Mm -hmm. But overall, it feels great. It's so cushy. The ride is amazing. Well, our chain just fell off because we'd been taking on and off the clip so many times. It's just not holding as well. So nothing broke. Nothing major can take care of that. Needed to be tightened anyways. Yeah, uh, we were changing around gearing and that chain ended up a little loose, so. still waiting on a fuel pump for Cinderella, but once we get that, swap out the chains, we are gonna take it up into the mountains and make a mega edit of just fully sending it in the mountains. But for now, we got a bonus video that I think you guys are really gonna like, so check this out. Here comes my car, getting the tires nice and warm. Yes. That's gonna be me in a few minutes. That is going to be you in a few minutes. <laughs> We're back here at Dream Racing, but today is gonna be a lot different. It's Mariella's birthday, and she likes Ferraris, 
So we are both gonna take Ferraris on the racetrack. We're gonna film everything. It's gonna be super cool. This is like my favorite place in the world right now. So <laughs> is this more your birthday present or mine? For your birthday. I mean, it's both of us, <laughs> let's be honest. <laughs> Think of the interior of this thing. Ah, uh, you know, <laughs> Italian. What can I say? <laughs> Represent. Mike's the man. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> that was awesome, man. <laughs> I'm gonna take this on. No, so I went from like driving my dad's car three times to driving yours probably yeah. five times <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> to driving a Kika's Ferrari. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Your smile's just gonna keep going forever, huh? <laughs> it was really cool. I just drove a Ferrari. Was the first lap scary or did you kind of... No, it was so good because Mike's so good at telling me what to do. And I like I felt safe the whole time. So it was really cool. And the scene helped a lot and I don't know, it just it was it was awesome, what can I say? All those cars over here that we get, they is exactly stuck. The only thing that we change on those cars is a camera that we place inside the car and we have a couple of stickers, Pirelli and Dream Racing, that's, that's all. Wow. The performance of the suspension, the engine, everything keeps the same. We really want to show to people, we want to teach people how to drive supercars in a racing track. A lot of people, they own those cars. They come over here and they say, uh, Vinny, I, ha I have this car, I want to learn how to drive my car. Or sometimes people come over here, they're like, Vinny, my dream is buy a, a Cayman. So I want to drive a Cayman over here, I want you to teach me how to drive with the best performance on this car. And that's what you get over here at Dream Racing. So this car is the same badge, but it's wider, it has different wheels, it has the racing slicks on it, it has the aero. It's a completely different beast. He says it'll do about 10 miles an hour more in the corners than the road car version. So let's test that out. And uh, the beast is awake. Sounds amazing. <laughs> now we're gonna go for a scratch your tires, warm it up your tires for you. To warm it up the tires on the racing car, people think that you have just to shake the steering wheel and the tire is gonna warm it up. It's not exactly like that. You have to also use a lot of brake to heat up the inside of the tire. So you have the, the whole, as a whole of a temperature, you know, happening. Not only cold on the inside, hot on the outside. The whole thing is like a warm it up. So if you warm it up a tire, you have to, you know, 
how to do it. It's, it's, it's pretty fun, that's why I like racing, that's why I like cars, you know, it's always uh, something to do that which is not easy, it's everything is challenging, you know. Here comes my car, getting the tires nice and warm. That's going to be me in a few minutes. Amount of speed you can carry into the corners is just <laughs> oh, I know it's, it's yeah. unlike anything. Driver, that was a lot heads. of fun. Thank you very much. Very good driver. <laughs> now we were talking about being calm. You saw that we were like sideways. Yeah. And you saw the way I was acting inside the car with you. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference about being a dream racer. You know, we all having calm instructors. Then no matter the situation, we tell you what's happening. Yeah, and it felt like. I just counter steered and you enter fast, caught up but you you uh, you give up the speed. Like I don't want to go anymore. But we need the traction to carry on when you uh, enter fast. So, so we didn't have the traction. The quickly. You let go, let go. The suspension went up. The tires lose grip, and the, and then you back in the gas. And when straight, and when and you were with me. Mm -hmm. That's why we didn't spin. Good job, bro. <laughs> that was so much. <laughs> Very good, yes. lady. Nice to meet nice you. To meet you. I think the blood, the Argentina blood, helps a little bit, right? Oh yeah, South America. Brazilian blood here. Half Brazilian, half Argentina. That helps there a little you know. bit. It's yeah, an, an extra really warmth. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. We're gonna yeah. get the next victim yes. now. Yeah, yeah. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, guys. Thank you. Oh.